what uh, we thought we would do today is basically just go through a workflow scenario with uh, utilizing shipping data entry within MASS. Uh, if everyone can see the screen okay, what I have open is shipping data entry, which is a module inside of MASS that allows you to do your fulfillment on your orders. I'm going to just type in an order here bring it in to shipping data entry. I'm going to click on fulfillment and fulfill the shipment. Click on the shipping tab and then you'll notice we have a Starship button here in the lower left hand panel. Once I click on that, what's going to happen is the Starship user interface is going to populate your screen. The first thing you're going to notice here is uh, a dialog box for address validation. If you can look to the right, you'll see this is the address that has been pushed in from shipping data entry into Starship. And Starship, in the meantime, has gone out and done an address uh, correction. You'll see that it's added not only a, a zip code, but zip plus four. It would also validate whether or not uh, the shipment was residential or commercial. This is a feature that you don't have to utilize. It can be turned off completely. You can also set it to validate at the time that you actually process the shipment. We're going to go ahead and use it today. And then I'm going to just kind of go through the screen here and show you what you're actually seeing. If you'll follow the mouse up here to the left-hand corner, I want to bring your attention to this panel. Uh, what we have here is the source document, which is actually the invoice that was created in shipping data entry. Uh, how we're going to actually process this, and again, this is coming in from MASS, uh, uh, from the ship via inside of MASS, uh, how the shipment should be shipped, how it's going to be paid for, the account number, the sender address, and then again, here in the lower panel, the recipient address. If you look at the check mark here, you'll see that it is a valid address. So we did utilize the uh, address validation. Um, had the address been good coming in originally from MASS, you wouldn't have seen the screen uh, in the middle of the screen. You would just open up here to the UI. Now, we've actually landed on the weight field, and we have a weight coming in from MASS. And this is based on the line item detail uh, on the invoice of the different items that are on uh, the invoice. Uh, in the interest of simplicity here, I'm going to change that to less than 150 pounds. Um, so the, the top of the screen here has various tabs that relate to this particular shipment. For example, if I ship on, uh, click on the recipient tab, you'll see that the information that's filled in here on the recipient tab is also viewable here to the left. This panel is viewable the whole time as kind of a snapshot of the shipment while you're doing your processing. Let's go back to the packaging tab. We have the weight in here. And this can be integrated to scales uh, to weigh your packages. You can scan in the weight, or you can type it in, as I just did. I'd like to bring your attention down to the center of the screen here to sh show you some of the controls here that would allow you to add additional packages uh, or boxes to this shipment. Uh, you see we're on package one of one. Uh, by clicking the next button here, I could go to package two of two. We also have some controls over here to the left, a repeat button that would allow you to add multiple packages all at once to the shipment. And we have an add and delete here to the right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add another package to this shipment. And once I click two of two and I look back on the packaging tab at the top, you'll see that we're ready to place the second package on the scale. I'm going to tab one more time here to, to bring us over to the shipment view. And again, the information that's here to the left is already in place on the shipment view. So we're looking at everything pertaining to the shipment, how it's going to be processed, paid for, We've actually done a time in transit uh, from the UPS servers here because we have the weight in. To the right, we have more general information regarding the shipment. 
the actual sales order that was uh, utilized in shipping data entry in mass to produce the invoice. We have the purchase order coming in for mass. The fact that it's insured has also been mapped in. Quantum View Notify, uh, which most of you probably are aware is uh, UPS's name for ship notification. Uh, we have that pulling in as well. Now, if I wanted to find out exactly who was going to receive the ship notifications, I could simply click this ellipse button and see that I have an email address that is mapped in from the order inside of Mass. They will receive a ship notification. And one of the benefits of this is uh, that it eliminates customer service calls. Uh, we've all heard of the calls, hey, did the package ship, what's the tracking number? They will automatically receive a ship notification uh, with the tracking information the next day, the next morning, where they can actually go on the carrier website and track the package themselves. Uh, you'll notice I, I have a couple of other email addresses here. In this instance, we have uh, the sales rep that's responsible for this order uh, receiving a ship notification. We also have mapped in an exception notification. Uh, should there be inclement weather or you know, the package be lost or something like that, the carrier will actually notify the sales rep so that they can in turn add a little additional customer service by calling and letting the customer know that the package is either going to be late or uh, not on time. The third email address that we have mapped here is just a generic email address. And the reason we have this map for ship notification, uh, it allows us to maintain those ship notifications on our own for as long as we want. Okay, so pretty much we're ready to process the shipment at this point, but I would like to show you just a couple of other features before we do that. If I wanted to process the shipment, I could actually click the icon at the top here. And when I put my mouse there, you also notice that there's an F5. We have a hot button, the F5 function key, which will allow us to process the shipment without actually clicking the mouse. The icon here to the right is save as draft. Uh, if I were to click this, this will allow me to save this shipment inside of Starship's database open it later and process it. Uh, if I wanted to stage the shipment, get it ready to go, but the customer didn't need it shipped until the following week, I could simply go down here and change the ready date. And then open it up later and process it when it needs to go out. I do also want to show you, as Caroline mentioned, the rate shop feature inside of Starship. If I click on the rate shop button, what happens, Starship goes out to the various carrier mod, uh, servers that I have the modules for in Starship and pulls in our contract discount rates for the shipment. We have several features here on the rate shop. Uh, we can actually see by number of business days, total days, or estimated delivery, how long it will take the shipment to arrive. I can also view just the retail list rates the carriers offer to everyone else out there or my volume discount rates. We also have sort functionality on each of these. For example, if I wanted to see how I could get it the quickest to the customer, I could click the delivery. Or ascending, descending rates. To find out the most economical way, I could click on the charges. One other feature that you'll notice here in the rate shop window that Caroline also mentioned was the fact that you can only, you not only can process your parcel shipments within Starship's user interface, but you can also ship with common carriers for your LTL shipments. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and process the shipment. This is where your thermal labels would normally print out to go on your packages. We're going to show the labels on the screen here. Uh, so it's going to pop up and show you. But in real time, you'll see that both the tracking numbers and the freight were written back to mass for the shipment. Get out of this. I'm going to minimize this. Let's take a look at the documents uh, just briefly here. 
the thermal label. This is the first package. You'll notice that on the bottom we have the ship reference fields uh, available. Uh, if your customers require that, uh, for example, that you can have their purchase order printed on the label, this allows them in turn to go to the UPS website and track um, uh, utilizing their purchase order versus the tracking number. And the second label. Behind the thermal labels, we actually have a packing list printing out of Starship. Uh, this is uh, a nice feature if you want to print a packing list at the time that you process the shipment. This uh, packing list can also be printed on the 4 by 6 label, thermal label that you utilize for the package. A lot of our customers utilize that and just drop that into the box or put it on the outside of the box. Okay, um, so just to recap, uh, what we just did was process a shipment from shipping data entry. Uh, we fulfilled the order. We clicked on the Starship link. Starship populated uh, the screen. We were able to process the shipment, uh, send back the tracking and freight information to mass, and move on to the next shipment. So it's totally seamless. Uh, it does allow you uh, the opportunity to pull in line item detail from your order. Uh, this is a very beneficial if you do any type of international shipping as well as uh, LTL. Starship will maintain an inventory database that allows you to set up maybe information that you don't currently maintain in mass. I'd like to go in and just show that very brief, briefly. Uh, we have an inventory database that can be entered into Starship a couple of different ways. You can actually export your inventory out of mass and import it all at once into Starship. The second way is to actually uh, allow Starship to build your inventory on the fly as you process off of your invoices. Uh, this is beneficial because if you do pull it in all at once and two weeks later you have an inventory item that you're adding to mass, you don't have to go back in and import it in to Starship. The first time you actually ship that commodity on an invoice utilizing Starship, Starship will add that to the inventory database. Let me just go in just a little deep here, deeper here for a second to show you what I mean. Um, the line item for this inventory item is here with all the information. I have two additional tabs. I have a freight tab that allows me to add the NMSC codes as well as the freight classes for this commodity. And again, this totally automates our LTL shipping within Starship. Internationally, we can set up the harmonized Schedule B codes uh, for international commodities as well as any other documentation that's required, such as the uh, standard certificate of origin or the NAFTA. Okay, that's pretty much all I had today. Uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to show it to you, and if anyone has any additional questions uh, after the presentation, please feel free to email me at dhenry at vtechnologies and I'll be sure and get you the information that you need. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over 